Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. You know what this is by now. We are about to chat about an episode of Taskmaster and break it down task by task with a special guest. I'm your host, Ed Gamble, and we are, of course, currently in the midst of Series 12. Every week there is a new episode of Taskmaster on Channel 4 at 9pm. If you miss it live, you can, of course, catch up on all four. That's there for you to watch every episode of Taskmaster catch up watch the episode before you listen to this podcast because there will be spoilers for episode 4 series 12 and our special guest this week is victoria corin mitchell yes a current contestant on series 12 of taskmaster will be asking her what it was like to be on taskmaster whether she'd heard of taskmaster before whether she'd watched taskmaster did she enjoy her experience all those questions and more as well as specific chat about this episode it's coming up right now don't forget to keep watching taskmaster Check out all the Taskmaster goodies on taskmasterstore.com. Get the app. Look at the YouTube channel. Do all of those things. But mostly, the main thing you have to do is enjoy this episode with Victoria Corin Mitchell. If you have any questions for future guests, email us at taskmasterpodcast.gmail.com. But for now, just relax, enjoy, and listen to the wonderful Victoria Corin Mitchell. Welcome, Victoria, to the Taskmaster podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming on. It's an absolute, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Current contestant on Series 12 uh, and, and excited to be a contestant on Series 12. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we filmed the task during the lockdown period, so I was excited to be out of the house. Yeah. I mean, it didn't last, but I was happy to begin with. <laughs> the, the, studio, the studio shows are, have all been great so far, and it's, there, there is that feeling from you. When the first episode started and they showed the first task, you sort of go, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> you have the look of someone who knows what you did in the tasks and they're all about to be trotted out in front of you and you look really worried. <laughs> I'm not brilliant at watching myself do anything, though, really. Fortunately, the way we were sitting in the studio in this very isolated way, I can't really see the screen because it's sort of huge. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, it's it's my enormous self, like Godzilla in a sort of <laughs> 50s drive-in. Um, but I couldn't quite see, thankfully, yeah. anything that was going on. Did you? Would you say you enjoyed your experience overall on Taskmaster? Oh, yes, very much so. I hugely enjoyed being in the house doing the tasks with Alex. That was great. It's just very much the sort of thing I enjoy and it's brilliant. The studio was a bit odd and it was a bit odd because the audience wasn't there. So they played it for an audience later and yeah. you hear that response, but we didn't get that. And it's quite an odd thing because the atmosphere is quite roasty, which is not really my thing. I'm a, I'm a adoring fan of Greg Davis, you know, off yeah. screen as a friend and as a fan. And I, this is no, I love what they do. But that kind of, you know, I'm not a comedian. The other people are all comedians. That kind of roasty telling everyone what's wrong with them is not my natural register. Sure. And normally you'd have an audience there to kind of take the curse off it. If you imagine when you watch the actual experience was Greg telling me I was shit to total silence. <laughs> and so you, would, you don't really, it's hard to get your bearings. I mean, yeah. especially if, if the thing that I brought in as a, as a, you know, to win a prize was some bit of wordplay, as it often yeah. is. I'd come up with some sort of pun to bring in. And I say, here's the pun, and there's <laughs> silence. And Greg <laughs> says, that's a terrible pun, and there's silence. And then he goes, and that'll be no points for Victoria, and there's <laughs> silence. And that was quite an odd... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> watching it back on television and then you can hear the audience watching laughing and it's sort of fine. Yeah. But uh, in the recording, it was a bit harrowing. Yeah, it really, it really does sound harrowing. Mm. I mean, I mean, you more than held your own, though. I mean, you say you're not a comedian, but everyone else was, and you're not used to that roasty atmosphere. I actually think, in the history of Taskmaster, no one's held their own better against Greg's points because you destroyed him with logic, whereas all comedians have got is just sort of shouting back at him. <laughs> That's very nice of you to say. I'm not sure that I destroyed him with logic. I no, think he I looked terrified. I could see it in his to, eyes. To... My little fists of logic beating against his big manly chest. I think I generally slumped to the ground in a pool of my own logic. <laughs> had you uh, had you watched the show before before you did it? Oh yes, I'd watched the show, and, and most specifically, I'd watched David Baddiel in the yeah. show. Yeah. 
uh, who's a great friend of mine and obviously was hilarious. And the yes. thing with David Baddiel is, you know, people think he's very smart. And so it was funny when he was then bamboozled by the tasks. And um, I watched that mainly to ensure uh, that that didn't happen to me. And as you can see, that was a very, was a very successful uh, research. Yes, absolutely. You completely <laughs> nailed it, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, David's the perfect example of that. And I was on the series with David, and it was wonderful from minute one to see that he was gonna he was gonna come unstuck straight away. Um, yeah, it's always uh, it's always wonderful, and it's got that thing uh, which I hope we'll also see in Outsiders, which is the new thing on Dave that you're in, and yes. uh, you're brilliant in that, I must say. But it, it, it's, those shows have got this sort of rather magical thing where if you put comedians straight onto reality TV like a sort of I'm a celebrity or a strictly it can be quite hard mm -hmm. to do jokes it looks a bit weird because most of the time if the dynamic you're in you're with an enormous highly skilled Russian ballroom dancer <laughs> talking to a sort of ex-Latin champion about the rumba if you suddenly do a joke you you, you can seem like a bit of a twat yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> but on a panel show like a QI or have I got news for you it's a very controlled environment mm -hmm. so what Taskmaster has is, is, is that sort of hinterland where you're there's lots of comedians there kind of bumping off each other like dodgems and being funny and it's a funny environment but you can't stop the personality leaking out there's nowhere yes. to hide in a way quite um, yeah I think the nowhere to hide is definitely the the top line of Taskmaster really <laughs> much um, to my detriment I should say on this particular <laughs> series but as a, as a viewer I'm a fan no I think I think I think you're being unfair to yourself in that I think everyone has highs and lows in Taskmaster and and even within this episode that we're going to talk about, you have uh, <laughs> your lowest low and your highest high, I think, <laughs> uh, which is great. Um, the prize task, Victoria, you've already sort of hinted towards the, the prize tasks. Did you, in, did you enjoy doing the prize tasks? No, I hated that. I've never enjoyed anything where you do a bit. Well, this is where I feel very hard done by. So I've always been uncomfortable on Cats Does Countdown, which is a, a show I gleefully take part in only because I want to do the anagrams yeah. and the maths. Everything else is a minus. So the bit at the beginning where they go, and what have you brought to entertain us all with? What amusing prop have you crafted about which you're now going to do a type five? And I have nightmares about that. It's awful. But you yeah. get it done to do the anagrams. And you'd, similarly... love, you'd love Countdown. You should go on Countdown. Yeah, actual Countdown. I know. That'd yeah. be much better. It'd be much better. I wouldn't be good enough. <laughs> but it was a bit like that. But this is where I feel hard done by. But I go, all right, okay, fine. I'm going to think I've got it right. This is, this is what would be funny. It's a square. And this is a sort of a square. Cause it's a square. I'm going to bring this on. And then Greg would be really cross because basically they don't want you to bring on something funny. They want you to generally try as hard as you yeah. can to bring on... <laughs> best thing and I'm not sure my brain could get to you know what's the best thing to sit on and so I was very mean when I'd be very pleased with a particular bit of wordplay and I'd deliver it to Greg's stony authoritative face and let me remind you total silence <laughs> in the room and you, I would feel it'd be like that bit at school where you know you'd pass a note to make someone. I don't know if you did this, but I always did that. Like pass notes, you make people laugh in the room, and yeah. then they make you go up to the front and say the funny thing you said, and you stand up and you sort of deliver. Yeah. To some, so it's very much the Greg dynamic actually, because you've got some scared children and the teacher. No one's really ready to, and you have to say the thing. And as you say it, you go, oh, "No, that's not. It's not funny, is it? I did. I thought it was. It's not. That was. That was very much the prize tasks for me." Well, look, I, in, in terms of the prize task we've seen already, I really liked the diamonds that you sit on. This one, I was less of a fan of, Victoria, I'll be honest. The, the, uh, so the prize task was the best thing that has quite a few layers. And yeah. it would, now you've described the atmosphere in the studio when you try and do a pun as absolute silence. Mm. The edit makes so much more sense where you're going, well, I just brought in a joke. You know, I just thought I'll do it. But he'll like a bit of humour. The idea that in yeah. your head, Greg was going to... Lose it laughing. Losing mm. <laughs> humour. The thing is, but you see, but you have to look at it. For me, this is a, 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 this was my achievement. I don't expect to be good at the physical things. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fast runner. 
I can't throw things a long way. I'm quite short-sighted, but I'm too squeamish for contact lenses and too vain for glasses. I don't do it. But when someone says bring something with a lot of layers, yes. and everyone else is bringing a lasagna or a multicoloured layer cake, and I go, I tell you what's got a lot of layers. A chicken farmer. Yeah. Layers. You see the layers. I, that is about as close as I ever come to achievement. I take myself for a long lunch. When I've thought of that, I go, this is great. And yeah. I send it in and it's going to be great. And I bring, and then they put the picture of the, let's all have a, let's all have a look at what Victoria thought was funny. And everyone swivels up to look at the picture of this little plastic chicken farmer. Silence. Um, it goes to the heart of one's yeah, self esteem Because I know when we're about to watch a bunch of things where I, whatever, can't, catch Alex or hide badly behind a tree or, you know, the, something falls in the water that isn't meant to. So, but this, this is the high point. Yeah. Is this bit of wordplay? And they're looking at me in sort of horror. Why is that funny? Why is that good? <laughs> but also, I do think you should, there should be a situation where you get at least one extra point for not doing what everyone else did. Because everyone else did do the sort of more obvious route, I guess. They literally just picked I... something. With physical layers. So, I did once the for Comic Relief, I, the Great British Bake Off. I did that yes. show. And I went on with, it's one of those sort of surreal, that's like me, Ed Balls, um, Chris Kamara, the sports guy, and Kimberly from Girls Aloud, right? It's not a natural four, but we were there <laughs> baking. And one of the things we had to make was muffins. Muffins. And they said, I didn't really know whether they meant, you know, English muffins, American muffins. They're muffins, you know, the breakfast food. And I thought, well, do you know what I like? What I like for breakfast is a Bloody Mary. So I made Bloody Mary muffins. Yeah. Great. Vodka and, you know, some food colouring and tomatoes. And they were absolutely, you know, they were lovely. And the, the face of Mary Berry as she bit into this thing. Why have you done that? Why have you done that? Muffins should be banana or chocolate. Why, why would you put... And, you know, you're standing there in a giant kitchen yeah. with millions of people watching, having to go, I, I thought it would be a bit funny. And everyone else had done chocolate muffins. And she walked yeah. around saying they were all delicious. And I think she said, I saw in the later broadcast, she said, I think Victoria's let herself down. <laughs> that was awful because I desperately wanted Mary Berry's approval. Yeah. Um, and so, but that's it the thing. The it's the tr it's the tricky <laughs> thing, isn't it? It's the it's the crossover between uh, entertainment and doing well on these competition shows, because I always get told by my wife when I when I did something on Taskmaster or recently done Champion of Champions, if at any point I've been like, oh, I don't think I did that very well, I don't think that went very well, she always says, yeah, but then that will be funny, and your job is comedian. You're you're not someone who goes around trying to win competition shows. You should be funny. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, my instinct is I want to do well at it. No, but people tease you for wanting to do your best on the yeah. thing. Oh, Ed, it was so obvious that he yeah. wanted to do well. But you did win, whereas I'm really trying to do well and do very, very badly. So why don't you imagine that you've got all the same opportunity to watch yourself trying to be the best at something and yeah. also failing? <laughs> That's where I am. Uh, here it is. OK, a little toy poultry farmer with lots oh. of oh, chicken layers. layers. Oh, <laughs> very punny. It's it's a joke. It's a pun, and I I love jokes. And the joke is layers. Yeah, chickens lay eggs. Exactly, yeah. they lay. Oh, you were waiting for that setup. To, yeah. I, I, <laughs> and that's just got more points. I... <laughs> just <laughs> assumed you liked humour. Now, let's be absolutely clear. It is a shit joke. Okay, we're everything with a lot of layers here because they lay eggs. Da da. It's a joke. I uh, thank you. I've decided. Okay. <laughs> Well, yes, you brought in the poultry farmer, um, but it didn't do the worst. Morgana still did worse with her vegetable lasagna. I'm surprised Greg didn't go for it. Greg normally goes for food-based stuff. If he's hungry when when the prize comes up, it normally does quite well. Um, I think it was the picture. It didn't look very appetising. It was, the vegetable it was a disgusting-looking vegetable lasagna. Mm. Um, I'm not sure whether Morgana brought that in or they... Googled a picture of vegetable lasagna or made one themselves, but yeah, it didn't. It didn't do the prize uh, much favours. Um, I'm one joking point... though. I genuinely, I'm not. I really did think that the chicken farm was a good thing. I thought that was good. It has a lot of layers. I, you know, I genuinely. I still. I resented. I think that was good. 
the thing is with Greg is he's not very wry, is he? If if it's like a sort of like clever pun or something like that, he's not he's not one to get on board with that. He's no. pretty straightforward when it comes to when it comes to his jokes. Yeah. Um, uh, did at that point did you? I mean, obviously we can't talk about price tasks in the future, but when that didn't go down well, were you panicking about things that you had lined up to bring on future episodes? <laughs> I was in, in such a state of general trauma. I'm not sure I <laughs> panicked about anything specific. Because the thing is, it wasn't about wanting to win, because I, it didn't, people assume that I'm going to be very competitive because I play poker. Mm. And I, I, I played, certainly before, I played poker at quite a, a kind of high stakes competition level. But that's not, it's, it's I only want to win at poker. I'm, I don't actually want to win competitions, but I do want the... <laughs> approval of the of the people around me so yes. I, the, 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 and the problem with i realize now with bringing in i don't mean it wasn't meant to be an undermining joke i mean it wasn't meant to be a sort of satire but yeah. bringing in wordplay the problem with it is is, is that if it does badly is that you feel it's a judgment on your on your <laughs> comic instincts yeah which is quite big i mean you don't really want to i mean i say this, you don't really want to win things especially not on british tv people just think oh what a yeah, I mean, not about you, but uh, uh, of course not. No, I think, but you are right. You are right, especially if you like do it in such a barefaced way that you're like, I, I really want to win this, and then yes. you actually succeed. Yes. That's the last thing people want to see on British TV, I think. Yes, but the, but this would be my advice to future contestants: don't bring on something that you think is funny because it's, it doesn't matter if you get no points. But if you get no points, and because it feels like the thing you think is funny, nobody else does. Yeah, it is like you're four and standing in the corner. So I would go for the serious, you know, yeah, I tell you what's got, got a lot of the airs, the earth's core. I'm bringing yeah. that. Much better. Well, that's, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. The last the last three uh, that got to the top of the table. Guz brought in a, a load of his jackets, all his jackets, and put them on Alex. I'm struggling to see what the prize was here. What was he offering people to take away? Was it all his jackets or was it Alex wearing all of his jackets? Oh, that's interesting. Yes, technically, Alex should have been the prize, shouldn't he? Yeah. That hadn't occurred to me at the time. I assumed it was the jackets, but you're right. It should have been, Alex should have been part of the prize. I mean, it was, look, let's be honest, it was another last minute panic prize from Guz. He's already brought in a chair from his <laughs> dressing room. Um, so yeah, it's abs- like if I spy, isn't it? And you look yeah. around and it's just, is it the curtains again? <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. And all his jackets would have been there anyway in the studio ready for him to wear on the various episodes. So he has just uh, yet again brought something from the studio just beforehand. Yeah, um, that's a very likeable quality, though. It is. I mean, he's just like a he's like a little boy, guys, isn't he? Um, yeah. And he screwed up by complimenting Alex was the was the issue, which suggested Greg might have given him more points. And he already got three, which I think was too much for bringing all his jackets in. Desiree brought in a layered vanilla cake. And there's no way this should have got more than the lasagna. There's, but it's she the played same, the emotion the card, thing. wasn't it? Like yeah. her grandma's cake or something. I think she, her mother, her mother made it, and uh, something about her mother's being saints and stuff. I think she she really lent into that. But she she lent in, and it was very touching. And you know, Greg really loves his mother, and I I just I think she's she's really she's done a bit of a strictly here. And we've had the yeah. violins and there's been the video and there's a big thing in the family. I, that was below the belt in my yeah. view. Yeah. And for me, probably the best thing about the whole experience was meeting Desiree. I think she's amazing. I'm sort of besotted with her. I think about her when she's not there. She's sort of, she's everything a woman should be. She's kind of sort of powerful and beautiful and yet also very silly. I mean, she's just, She's this sort of incredible person. Yeah. Uh, however, <laughs> don't play the family. <laughs> okay, can't. The plastic chicken farmer is definitely better. If I'd gone, and you know what, as well, my late father was a chicken farmer. It's not what he was known for, but he was. And when I look at it, that's what I think of my childhood. Yeah, but then you can't end that by going, and lot of layers. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Oi, like... <laughs> No. <laughs> you no. Never end a, a heartwarming and uh, an emotional story with a pun. It won't. It will. <laughs> it will ruin the rest of it. But you know what? I don't like the taste of vanilla. So for me, more layers of vanilla cake has the worse it's going to get. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Did you say that on the on the night? No, I didn't want to. You know, tear down other people's hopes and dreams. Interesting. Yeah. I felt the thing was to you know 
fight the corner of my own That's evidently fair. weak uh, submissions, <laughs> but not necessarily try to try to knock other people. You know, good luck to them. I say. Um, Alan brought in a wig from the nineties, which was, was used as a double for his hair. I'm assuming it was from Jonathan Creek. Well, I um, assume it was from Jonathan Creek, but it looked exactly like Alan's hair in the nineties. Yeah, it really did. I mean, I'm on board with anything to do with Jonathan Creek. I absolutely loved that show. So um, it's a brilliant show. I'm not entirely sure that it's the only thing about layers. I don't think Alan has a layered haircut. I think he's got really curly hair. Yes. So if you were going to get a forensic. Yes, you know, if Vidal Sassoon had been there, he might have said, "Have you had your hair cut into layers, Alan, or does it just grow like that?" I feel like there are some pity points flying around for Alan, uh, and have been in the last couple of episodes where Greg sort of feels a bit sorry for Alan, and the fact that he went and got a wig out of the attic is quite a bleak proposition. So. Bunged him the five points just so he could feel better about what he had to do. But it was still, you know, I think you're right. I think it's not prop- uh, not a properly layered thing, but it's lovely to see a prop from Jonathan Creek. Yes. It and- is. I mean, it's weird. There was the thing with Alan, especially when I'm being reminded about Jonathan Creek. I, it, it was an awkward thing for me being paired with Alan in the team tasks. Yeah. I can see why they would do that. And in one way, it was great because... He's a friend of mine, and genuinely, it was lovely to see him. I was ridiculous. He only lives up the road, but we hadn't seen each other because, of, you know, normally our kids play together, whatever, but it was all because of COVID. Nobody's done anything. Yeah. And so it was lovely to see him. Oh, but there's another thing going on, which is I'm a massive fan of his. You know, yes. In the 90s, what I was doing was spending money on tickets to go and see Alan Davis doing jokes that I could quote to you today. I think he's amazing. <laughs> so there was a sense... I've rarely felt as awkward as being shown a kind of one dimensional mountain drawing and being given a small bag of implements and told, go on, you go and do a comedy skit with Alan Davis. (laughs) As happy as I was to be with him, the idea that I was supposed to collaborate with him on some kind of knockabout physical comedy, it it seemed so presumptuous Uh, and, and, and things that were, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of his now, but thinking about (laughs) You know, he is so far my kind of performance senior. That those reminders just, it just was what the next time I had to, whatever it was going to be. Okay, so it's going to be you, Alan, and a goat and a camcorder. <laughs> I'm making it sound like porn. I realise that I've gone too far into the sentence and I can't back out. But emerge with the funniest thing. And I yeah. imagine Alan thinking... Not I'm, think sure, that, but, you know. I'm, I'm sure he, d- he didn't think that. And also, let's not forget that in this episode, and we will talk about that later, it, the roles are immediately reversed. This, that is Alan being your inferior, trying to solve a riddle, which is absolutely hilarious that we the Jonathan <laughs> Creek wig. Jonathan Creek was good at solving riddles. Alan Davis, not so much. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see that later. Ready? Yes. OK, I'm going to give one point right. to uh, Morgana's lasagna because it was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give twice as many points to Victoria's joke, and I want you to reflect on that. I'm giving three points to Gus because you spoke positively about Alex, and I don't like him. (laughs) I'm giving four points to you because the banana layered cake looked delicious, and I feel sorry for what you did to your mum. And finally, just to annoy everybody, I'm giving a man who found an old wig in his attic... (laughs) Five points. That's Taskmaster. <laughs> and if you don't like it, <laughs> top <tough> shit. <laughs> Five points. Tweet, tweet, with... tweet as much as you like. <laughs> Let's talk about task one though, because this was a this was a wonderful moment for you as well. I think. Uh, complete the course as slowly as possible. You must always be riding the bike forwards within the limits <sighs> of the course. Every time you put your foot on the ground, the clock will be paused and your final time will be halved. If you leave the course or miss an instruction, your time will also be halved. And the clock will be paused until you're back in position. Slowest wins. Your time starts when uh, Alex fires his starter pistol five minutes from now. Yeah. That's not really what the task was for me. <laughs> the task for you, I've got that written down here, learn how to ride a bike in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which I almost sort of managed. It was, it was wonderful. I mean... You talk about uh, personalities being revealed in Taskmaster. There's nowhere to hide. 
There's also little things you find out about people that you didn't know. <laughs> For example, you've never ridden a bike. No. No. What was that feeling like when you saw that bike, when you were approaching the task area and you saw the bike? Did all the blood drain <laughs> drain from your face? It, it, yeah, it was it was um it was pretty terrible. I mean a lot of things were going on there. I was obviously a bit frightened to get on the bike. Yeah. And thinking, all right, they're not going to make us go in the road, right? This is going to be the worst. I'm just going to fall off and get some kind of scratches and maybe a head injury. It's not going to be that you have to ride it in the traffic. They won't do that. Um, but also, you know, the, the sort of the lost ship of my public dignity <laughs> sailing over the horizon, the sort of memory. I mean, we were a while in by then and to sort of think, OK, I've made the decision. I've said I'll do Taskmaster. I've said it. I'm here. Yeah. There are most people don't know who I am, but if they do, what they think is, geez, that person who sits authoritatively behind the desk, she knows all the stuff. Yes, the link is 12th century Venice. Let's go to the next question. She really, she knows what's going on. Nobody ever sort of comes up to speak to me in the street. Like if we're walking, they'll come and talk to my husband, ridiculously, my husband who's very shy. Yeah. But it's very affable on the television. So people will come up and talk to him and he'll just not know what to do and he'll try and say a nice hello and then he'll worry that he didn't say it in a nice way and then the rest of the day will be, does that nice? Did I seem mean? Was it that? Never speak to me because they think I'm so together. Yeah. So authoritative, quite intimidating, stern, all of that. You know, as I looked at this bicycle, I thought, I, I know what's, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> It is going to be footage of me just riding along, falling off and screaming. But I can't, I mean, I, or I just leave. It's too late to do anything about it, isn't it? Yeah. You can't, yeah. you can't yeah. do anything about it. Unless, you, I guess the only option there would have been to find some incredible loophole that meant that you didn't have to ride the bottle. I do, but I, th I think I mean you saw how long the title of the task was. There's no, there's no way. I don't, I don't think no, Alex you can't. Left any and gaps. you'd have to do it immediately. It's, it's a bit like, um, you know, if you stumble over in the street, a lot of people are looking. You have to immediately pretend that you've got a limp, and that's how you walk. Like right away. It's yeah. no good walking along normally for a bit. You have to, you have to be right there with no. Actually, I walk like that. So shame yeah. on you if you, if you laugh. <laughs> and if, <laughs> in the moment. If you don't see an immediate loophole, you've got to just get on the get on yeah. the bike. Just got to do it. And hope that people think, you know, well, there's stuff I can't do, so good luck. You, but, so you were you, conf I mean, obviously not confident, but there was a moment before you started riding the bike where you said, I've seen it done. So was there a moment where you thought, well, I've seen it done, so I've probably learned how to ride a bike just by watching people ride bikes? Well, people say it's like riding a bike, don't they? In meaning mm. you don't forget how to do it. But I was thinking, well, it it can't be that difficult, it, because it's, 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 it's sort of shorthand for this is something everyone can do. I mean, it, you're it, in it that you're in at the deep end with riding a bike. I'll tell you that because it is very difficult to ride a bike slowly and stay upright. Um, just to stay upright at all is very confusing. I mean, for other people, people that think it's normal to ride a bike might imagine what it would have been like for them if it was a horse. Yes. And you go, oh, so you have got to get on it and then yeah. make it walk, but not too fast. It, it's very confusing. If you haven't ridden a bike before, it's very, it's, it's hard conceptually to think about why it would stay mm -hmm. up. It's a very, it's a thin thing. Yeah. And it's, and obviously slowly is even worse, but that's, that's the first thing is you, 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 you think, well, people can do this, but also they take a while to learn it. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, it's really tricky. So yeah. it, it was that moment for me as well that you discovered that there were other things to do other than ride the bike. Yeah. Where the bike was such an insurmountable thing that when you found out there were other things in the task, you you, you said, "What? Well, I've got to do. I've got to do other stuff as well." As well, but well, that was never going to be possible. No. Never ever taking your hand <clears throat> off the what do you call them? The, the flat steering wheel thing. The, the handlebars. Um, handlebars taking your hand off the handlebars the to throw a wheel. ball yeah. in a bucket or something <laughs> <laughs> i know the word handlebars I just didn't it that um yeah no i was never gonna never gonna simultaneously do something else when you started riding the bike when you were actually on it and it was happening and you were moving the look of joy on your face was incredible yes because actually it, it was quite easy that's the thing it was yeah. the problems are the steering Mm -hmm. and the stopping 
I, I, I still don't understand how people do hills. Like, if you're going down a hill... Yeah. Presumably you can't... St- if you stopped, you would just somersault forwards, wouldn't you? You've got to lightly brake. You've got to sort of, like, increase the pressure on the brakes as you get a bit faster, just to make sure you don't start going too fast. Braking it doesn't interest me. Uh, when I was cycling along... There, I thought this is kind of great, but I would only stop by putting my feet on the ground. Braking right. seems like massively asking for trouble because it's just you're going to fly forwards and you're going to that's no good. But if cycling, if they banned cars completely, which I'm sure they will, it's just whether it happens in my lifetime, and the only other things on the roads are just cy- cyclists all going in the same direction, I would probably do it. Yeah, like a Tour de France but, sort of scenario. Yeah, is that what happens in the... Well, they all, they're all a big group of them. Yeah, they all, all go in it, yeah. Big race, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, but it's that kind of thing, the stopping, the turning. That's what's the, the problem with cycling, in my view. Have you cycled since? Because you seem to, I thought at the end there, I thought you got bitten by the cycling bug after you did it and you decided to cycle back to the beginning. I haven't cycled since, but I haven't got a bicycle. To, to actually acquire a bicycle in order to do that. I mean, I know people with bicycles, but they're very, they're tall. Or... I've got a bicycle for my daughter. A neighbour had one they weren't using, and she's got one, but with stabilisers. Yes. And so we, we go out on that. I, I, can't, I mean, it's, it's like a foot high. I would look ridiculous. But if I could get no. one with stabilisers... Victoria, no one's suggesting that you use your daughter's bicycle. <laughs> no, but that's the only bike that I have access to. I, I don't... I think it's probably not for me. I think it's a bit too late in life. I think it was a wonderful moment when you were like, oh, this might be a new hobby, and you were on the, you were on the bicycle and you were giving it a go. I think, I think you should still... You should still consider it. It would be a wonderful If story. I was near a bicycle at the right... I definitely would cycle again. If I saw a bicycle that was the right sort of height... Well, you know, I think, you know, if David's listening to this, I'm sure he, he listens to the Taskmaster podcast. It's a good idea for a Christmas present. Um, so, it's, it's uh, not. I don't want that for... It. It <laughs> I don't want it for a Christmas present. But thank you. Um, you took 95 seconds. You put your foot down eight times. Um, like you say, you weren't going to use the brake. It was all about putting your foot down. Um, Morgana, you you got two points, but Morgana did worse again. Uh, she's having a bit of a rough episode. Uh, she burst the wrong balloon. Uh, she did the course in sixty eight seconds and made nine mistakes. So her final time was one sixteenth of a second, um, which must have been hugely frustrating. Uh, that's one point uh, for Morgana. Uh, Guz, um, I don't know what he was doing at the end with that pedal and down technique, where he had one foot on a pedal as if he was balancing, but then was using the other foot to steady himself, so was halving his time every single time he put it down. I never really understood what they were trying to do. No. <laughs> you, it, you, to go slowly round, what are you meant to do? Just pedal slowly? Or no? Well, I I, here's one thing I thought, and it was the first thing that occurred to me, and no one seemed to do it, was if as long as you were in the course and you were cycling then the time was still running. You didn't need to go straight and do everything and go to the end. You could have cycled around each obstacle like four or five times and just spend as long on the course as possible, like weaving in and out. Oh, I see how you won this now. That's, (laughs) yes. I mean, I couldn't because to go around it, you'd have to be constantly turning, wouldn't you? But if you could, of course. Yeah, you just hang hang out on the course for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're all morons. (laughs) Um... Alan did it. I mean, Alan was so chilled out as well. I mean, the co- the combination of uh, seeing Alan and Desiree at the same time, even right at the end, just saying, having to say, I'm a speedy cyclist. Alan literally just said it as if he was walking along. Just, I'm a speedy cyclist. Popped it in. Desiree, I'm a speedy cyclist. She was so, <laughs> she was <laughs> so upset. <laughs> yeah, so worried. But you, um, to me, obviously looking at back, it's sort of about magic that they can ride the bike. Everything else is secondary. Yeah. Alan yeah. was just, yeah, I'm just, same if, as if he was walking. Yeah, I just yeah. glide along on these wheels. But that has been Alan's vibe for the series so far, I think, in mm. that he does approach every task as if it's something he normally does and just sort of like plods through it and then walks out the other side. He, he, he doesn't really get upset or worried about anything, does he? No, he doesn't, which is, which is he has an unflappable quality, which I yeah. envy. Yeah, it's great. But then envy is such a flappable emotion. You see, I've fallen at the first hurdle. Yes, exactly. Alan would never envy anything. No, he wouldn't. Um, Desiree, uh, Desiree did it in 84 seconds uh, and only made four mistakes, which is pretty impressive, actually. Uh, so she gets the five points and Alan gets the four. Ah! 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 
Okay, okay, come on. There we go. There, there. Ah! Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't! Oh. I was actually psyched up to drop it in and then I didn't. I can't do it with one hand. There we go. Let's talk about task two. Spread jam on a slice of toast in a really cool way. Coolest mm. jam spreading wins. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. So you were instantly worried that you didn't know what people would think is cool. Obviously, the word cool worries me. Yeah. Because I don't... I mean, there I really don't subscribe to other people's idea of cool. I don't like it. Yes. You know, but I had to work out, I mean, who has set this task? Because Greg, you know, Greg's idea of cool, much so Greg might laugh about me and Alan being the old contestants. He's significantly older than I am. And it's possible that his idea of cool was set in sort of the world of the fonts. Yeah. You know, is he, is he your kind of, you know, hey, hey, combing your hair in a the jacket kind of cool? Yeah. Or is it your more modern cool, your kind of Mark Zuckerberg, what's cool is to completely get coding? Yeah. And, you know, have a load of Insta likes. Is it that kind of cool? Either way, I'm out in the cold. But yes. what was even meant by cool? Hugely subjective, the word cool. But then you're not, you're not doing what is cool to you because Greg is giving you the points. So it's a really, it's a really tricky one. And you've just got to do the sort of first thing that comes into your mind, I think. Um, I, mean, I think I would Gus... say, also context is all because... I did think that having not a care for your own life is quite cool. It's always like that yeah. in films. If it's James Bond or kind of Mel Gibson in something, that is quite cool. And I thought basically shoving an old trowel in your mouth is showing a, a absolute carelessness about germs, which was quite good. So I think I did look quite sort of physically confident and brave, but then you jammed it up against me screaming as I attempted to ride a bike. <laughs> so it was like gave the lie to any idea that I have no concern for my own safety. You definitely, yeah, you definitely lost cool points with the bike thing anyway. So you're working mm. from negative cool on this task. Um, yes. I think, I think it was a good piece of logic that it's cool to not care about your own safety. But I think that is like riding a motorbike with no helmet or, you know, something dangerous like that rather than eating dirt. I, I don't think that's necessarily the coolest way to show you don't care about your own safety. No, but then you've got to imagine what we're doing. It, it gets very philosophically complicated because a lot of concentric circles. The context we're in is that we are on television, hmm. jumping about like performing seals, desperately trying to win the approval of a man sitting on a big throne, and then it's going to go on the television. How cool is it ever going to be? Yeah. We've turned up. Look at what we're prepared to do for money. We scream with every frame. We've taken a fee, we've left our dignity at the door, and whatever nonsense they ask us to do, we'll do it. So how much is that ever going to... Do you know what I mean? You just you yeah. can't, you can't get outside those parameters. It's, yes. like, it's like trying to imagine the mind of God. You can't. If you're inside a thing, it's not... Whatever we do that's trying to be cool, we're only trying to be cool in the eyes of Greg Davis in the hope that he'll give us some points as we sit there panting like spaniels for a yeah. drop of water. It's never going to be cool, no matter what you do. Yeah, that in itself is very uncool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, look, I, I think it was a good bit of logic that, that you'd, be, you'd be cool if you didn't care about your own safety. But I think commentating on why it's cool always ruins something that's cool. If you see what I mean, if you'd just <laughs> yes. done it and then argued it in the studio, but giving like a, t a TED talk on <laughs> on why it's cool whilst you were spreading the jam on might have taken away from the, the sort of cool, impulsive oh. element of it. Is that what it is? But I struggle with silence. And obviously, that's not very cool. But it's do you think if I'd just done that in complete silence? Oh, it's very <laughs> awkward. I mean, you can always judge someone's self-confidence by how long a silence they're prepared yes. to leave. Yeah, totally. Some people can do it for ages. I see what you mean. Yes, if I just yeah. spread the jam quietly. Yeah, I can't. No, I couldn't do that. Or Yeah, I mean, look, everyone filled the silence, I think. I mean, Guz, Guz's was my favourite. I think it deserved the, the five points, um, even though he was slightly scared by the toast popping up. But I could watch Guz be, <laughs> be slightly scared by things forever. <laughs> um, the croquet mallets was a nice, a nice way of doing it. And I think it appealed to Greg, the sort of semi-violent way of getting jam onto toast, of just like slamming it on with the mallets. It's very satisfying to watch, I think. 
Yes, I mean, that's in a world where croquet mallets aren't the antithesis of cool. Yeah. I mean, that's, you don't, when you see your coolest kind of young people hanging out, they're not off for a game of croquet. No, no, sure. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, fair play, that was, that was cool. The double mallet, yeah. Um, Alan wore three pairs of sunglasses uh, and, and I mean, it's fun watching people have a meltdown on Taskmaster. They just like invented some mad story of him walking around in the gardens with, with a leaf blower and using a leaf blower to spread the jam, which I really liked. But what was interesting about that was there, that was an example of Alan being much, much less cool than he is normally. Yeah. <laughs> You know, his yeah. natural self, he's a great comedian. He has this incredible, like a superpower, this yeah. incredible kind of comic force combined with this unflappable, laid back personality, which is yeah. amazingly cool. With each successive pair of sunglasses he put on, he got less cool. <laughs> yeah, in fact, he plays it cool for every task. This is probably the task where he plays it the least cool because yeah. um, he's trying. Uh, but the leaf blower blowing jam out was a good idea. If it had blown it on with more force, I think it would have been the five points, but it sort of just like flopped out the end of the leaf blower. Yeah, but is that cool? I mean, that'd be quite impressive. But if yeah. you were in a cafe and a guy <laughs> came in with a leaf blower and just kind of blasted uh, gobbets of jam onto his yeah. toast, would you think, i tell you what that guy is, cool. I'd think it was weird. I'd probably complain, actually. You'd think it was weird. You'd think it was frightening. I yeah. think having any equipment is a bit uncool. The thing my brother think? said to me once, but one time when I was trying to be cool at school, absolutely, but my brother is quite cool. Um, well, he exactly was when we were at school. And one of the things he said to me, and I remember it with shame to this day, he said, I think it's a problem that that little, <laughs> that little satchel you have. <laughs> I, this is, I, it's an awful kind of navy and red stitch, not like an old school satchel which would be quite cool but this was a sort of canvas bag and i sort of held it and it was bulging with stuff yeah you know, a snack you know all these sort of things whereas he and i just suddenly as he said it i didn't understand how it was possible he could just go to school with sort of nothing <laughs> he didn't have water he didn't have an apple a pen i mean he might have sometimes held a book but just the fact that he was just heading out there with nothing at all was in itself so cool yeah so i would say being obliged to carry a leaf blower and you know what, I, yeah. I was going to say, oh, but that's why you're where you are, Victoria, and, you know, you're, and your brother's where he is, but then he's also massively successful as well, so that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, he earns so much more money than I do. <laughs> yeah, so. Take, you hear that, kids? Take nothing to school every day and you'll earn loads of money. Um, Desiree uh, spits the jam onto the toast. <laughs> And yeah. I like the idea of the graffiti. I think that was a really, I think she deserved an extra point for that and for the commitment of licking it onto the toast. Uh, and Greg, Greg seemed to think Morgana had a full breakdown. I think she looked totally in control. Within Morgana's vibe, that seemed like a fairly normal thing to do. I mean, again, this is, she went the wordplay route, which again, didn't really pay off. Yeah, well, I think if the task had been what is the most erotic way to put jam on toast? <laughs> Obviously, the leaf blower would win, but Morgana would be a close second. Yeah. Uh, whether cool, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just, I imagine it inspires a lot of strong emotions in the viewers. Let's just put it that way. Okay. But the, the bit when, they, when the ice went down her top. Yeah. I imagine there was an element of, of, of delight for the viewers whether it was that they were impressed by the cool i don't know um but yes i i see do you know i'm only just realizing it's because ice is cold i'm gonna admit this to you ed right oh it's wow, because okay. the things are cold <laughs> yes isn't cool. it? yeah exactly yes do you know i wasn't even i <laughs> <laughs> who am robustly heterosexual, wasn't really concentrating on the rationale. As the ice creams went in and the, and the ice cubes, I wasn't really, yeah, I'm just getting it now. Okay. Yeah, cool. It's the cool, cool situation. Yes. Well, then I've, I feel very proud of myself for managing to maintain decorum and actually seeing the wordplay for what it was. You um, should be proud of yourself. I was thinking of it in terms of... A, a, a bit like mine it's like she does she doesn't care that it, this would be very uncomfortable to have the ice right. cubes down there so yeah it's cool as in like i don't really know it's because the things are cold yeah. yep mm -hmm. yes all right um, i'm there 
Well, no, it didn't do well anyway. Uh, like two Cornettos down the top, uh, it was two points. Um, there we go. Yeah, been waiting to do that for a while. Was. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you are cool, Gus, what makes cool? Because honestly, you look pretty frightened when that toaster went up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, listen. I would, I would argue that something popping out that was on fire at anybody. <laughs> True would make them not look cool. Yeah. So when I really, I was like, okay, I might be cool. It's when I was a teacher. You yeah. were also a teacher. I was. And when I was the guy that would walk in school in the morning, the kids would be like, yes, can't, what one with you? I'd be like, yeah, 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 firms is this and that. And then when my colleagues came in, the kids would be like, you're a dickhead. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> that level of cool is up there. That's and everyone right. else is a dickhead. <laughs> it's, a fair, it's a fair point. Yes, Good. It's a point I'm making. Task three, here we, here we go, solve the riddle. You must all stay in your rooms. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. Uh, and then an extra task for Morgana. Uh, you'll also get two bonus points if you can make one of your teammates say submarine. You can't say submarine at any point. If they think you've tried to make them say submarine, you lose two points. Um, now, Victoria, surely as soon as you saw this, you thought, this, this is it. This is, this is my task to win. I wouldn't have done the submarine one so well. She did that brilliantly, I thought. It was very um, good and it also made all the more funny by the fact she did that so quickly and then had literally nothing else to do for an hour and a half. Nothing to do for hours (laughs) while girls struggled with whatever. Yes, no, I was very relieved. I'm I'm all right at riddles. uh, It was more likely to play to my strengths than paint a portrait with a two-inch paintbrush I've never had to do before. Sure. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, that was... I mean... It was incredible how how quickly you solved it, and the fact that Alan was in the other room, and he had the other half of the jigsaw, but you didn't need him to have the other half of the jigsaw, and you'd solved it before he even got a chance to tell you. Um, it was yes, it was I know. I, I thought having the, the having the whole alphabet would have made it less fun because it was definitely a solvable puzzle with half of it. Yeah. Um, so I thought they that didn't because it in a way it delays it because. All the business of finding the other half of the puzzle. Yeah. You know, that sort of gets in the way. I'm sure if Alan had been focused on just solving the riddle, he would have done it very quickly as well. Yes. But he had to dress himself like Charlie Chaplin and, and, <laughs> and that's what I'm very bad at. You see, we used up a lot of time with me trying to decipher the diagram of the room that he was in. I was yeah. absolutely at sea with that. If you tell me P equals X, L equals Q minus three, that I can do. Yeah. But trying to work out what in this diagram is a window. Yeah. <laughs> I'm left in the dust. I can't, that I can't. I can't Alan think. did what exactly what I would do in that situation. Even before he'd read the bit about when someone looks like Charlie Chaplin, or you'd, you'd read that or told him about that, he'd put the mm. hat on already. So he saw a hat yeah. and he put it on. It's just pure, yeah. pure instinct. The, f- the funny hat's going on. <laughs> um, but it was it was marvellous to watch just you absolutely in, in control of that. It was great. And also just so exciting to see a secret cupboard. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing cupboard. some... Yeah, I love... Do you do escape rooms, Victoria? Do you know, I haven't ever done an escape room, and I must, because we had a, a great team, the Escapologists, in um, Only Connected. They were yeah. all escape room fans, and I hear a lot about it. There's a few in Cardiff, and uh, I, I still haven't been, but partly because... You know, with all of these things, people think I'll be good at that kind of thing. Well, maybe less so now. Maybe I'm yeah. freed by Taskmaster, liberated to go and do an escape room. But I just imagine people sort of slightly disappointed, going, oh, she's been in there three or four hours now. <laughs> should, we, should we call someone? I think, I, think you do, I think you would do well at them. Uh, given your performance in this, I think you would do well in escape rooms, and they are, they are a lot of fun. Um, so you and Alan did it in 33 minutes, uh, 33 seconds. Absolutely outstanding work from you and you know what alan was um very supportive i'll say that uh and he really tried um so morgana as we said dispatched with the um submarine task incredibly quickly uh, and she got the, yeah. the two bonus points fairly easily um now let's talk about desiree and guz desiree i, didn't I think desiree what, what, what guz what was doing understand? i don't understand what he was doing what was he doing just look at the thing you write it down and this letter is that letter and you're done what is he? Have, had he not encountered the alphabet before? I have no absolutely idea. Absolutely baffling, baffling. Desiree went into this annoyed anyway. So when she saw the yeah. task, she was annoyed because the riddle wasn't there. So she was angry at Alex straight away. Yeah. Guz seemed to sense that like a little brother. 
there was huge little brother energy from Gus throughout this task, and he just went. Yeah. I mean, in terms of catchphrases from this series so far, this is goes with another revelation is my favourite. <laughs> he just decided to be annoying and say he liked saying the word revelation and he thought, I'm just going to say this over and over again. Do you know what? That is a brilliant observation. It is a little brother dynamic. Yeah. It is. Because Desiree, I think, again, if Desiree had been left alone with half a jigsaw, yeah. she would have solved it. She's got an IQ of about 4,000. Yeah. She knows exactly what's going on. And I think that's right. I think there's an element of sabotage <laughs> yeah. in him just, you know, lobbing. It's like she's, she's building a house of cards and he's lobbing a tennis ball at it every five minutes. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and when she works out just to ignore Gus and he's not being helpful, he, he sort of, he goes off and does a song. He's just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw attention <laughs> somehow. This is Gus with another revelation. And I mean, uh, one more hour and he'd have been nude. Yeah. Just... <laughs> it was um, a, a, another couple of amazing quotes. One from Desiree, which was, fuck me in the face. When Gus, <laughs> Gus really, really was uh, not helping at all. And Alex was openly Don't... laughing at that point as well. It was lovely. It was absolutely classic comedy. Desiree there is the sort of classic sitcom dynamic yeah. of the highly intelligent person. I'm not going to say surrounded by fools because Morgana was great too, but Morgana was slightly, she was trapped off in the caravan. Yes. She wouldn't yeah, give yeah. any help. But for, it was like it was like a sort of black adder yeah. where he's just, there's just a baldric standing between him and success. And the sort of face of Desiree, the mounting frustration, <laughs> and she was held back by the people that were meant to be on her team. Yeah, was, uh, delightful. Even just the uh, like the alphabet was beyond Gus when when they tried to say V for Veronica, and he said, "Who the fuck is Veronica?" And at that point, you're like, "Right, Gus, just please, someone go no. and take the walkie-talkie off him. He's really, he's just a, he's a yeah. speed bump in this." Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. it was marvelous. I loved it. That might have been my, I think it might be my favorite task of the series so far. Just to see you absolutely nailing it. Uh, you and Alan as a team working so well and the polar opposite of the other team. It was great. <laughs> they were lucky to get two points each, Desiree and Guz. I feel like Guz should have got no points and Desiree should have got two. Um, well, this is the thing. That's that's the team, isn't it? You have to yeah. be happy for, uh, yeah. you know, even the person that basically sabotaged your operation <laughs> to benefit from its success. Yeah. And you and Alan, of course, uh, yeah, both got the five points. <laughs> the map out into the corridor. So you're both technically still in your rooms, but you can show each other your stuff. Presumably. Is that the double doors? Okay, so if that's the case, the X is on this wall. Okay, I'm gonna make my jigsaw. It's here somewhere. Hold on, I found another puzzle. <laughs> Guys, there's been another revelation in the lab. So many revelations. <laughs> USVG, Ledger, Yacht, Avoga, Ledger, Tobibi. It's like a cipher for kids. So the letter A equals E. B is L. Guys, have you assembled your half of the puzzle? Over. Sorry, guys, I'm just temporarily distracted. Could you just repeat Fuck that? me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the live task. Did you enjoy doing the live tasks, Victoria? Was that something that was up your street, or did you dread them? Well, it depended what they were. It's always uncertainty that's the problem, isn't it? Not really knowing what's mm -hmm. what's going to happen. So certain things, yes, I quite like the kind of thing where it's, you've got to throw a certain number of balls in a bucket or that kind of thing is fine. But you just you never know when it's going to be something absolutely awful. Yeah. So, you know, it's yeah. Well, this yeah, this was a throwing one. Get the most forks in your bucket. You may only throw after a full spin on your chair. You must stay sat in your chair at all times. You may not move your chair. You have 100 seconds. Um, I mean, it was just chaos, obviously. Uh, I enjoyed that. I think that's a good... I could happily spend a day doing that. I think that's a good, it's a good idea for a game. It feels like the sort of thing they developed when they were just in an office. It feels like the sort of thing you would develop in a writer's room when you're supposed to be writing something else. Yes. Um, uh, I, I wrote a lot of Man Down with Greg and we would play a game called um, Blue Tack Phone where you'd have to hold your phone up and the other person got to throw a full ball of Blue Tack from across the room towards your phone as hard as they could. Um, so it's very difficult to get the phone, but the risk of holding the phone up was intense. <laughs> um, so it's that level always... of game. Yeah, yeah no, I, but that, that kind of thing is always, that's good fun. 
Yes. I, I like yeah. that. And, you know, if, if when the jeopardy... I would... Because I don't... I think it's because I've got no pride tied up in that. I don't care if I can't throw a lot of forks in a bucket. That's not yeah. a problem for me. As opposed to, uh, to bring it back to the beginning, presenting Greg shyly with a joke that I'm quite proud of. Yeah. As he sort of sneers <laughs> it out of the room. And go, yeah, that's no good, is it? You sort of goes right to the core of everything you feel you are. You think being able to think of a reasonable pun is what compensates for not being able to get a lot of forks in a bucket. Yeah. But that sort of low jeopardy game is is quite fun. Yes. Yeah, I suppose you didn't go into Taskmaster being um, Victoria, uh, the lady who could throw lots of forks into a bucket. But if, if you did, I'd imagine that would have been a very nerve-wracking game. You know, that's fine. It's like when you see the, the sports people on Strictly, that's always very awkward. I remember seeing Tony Jacklin on there. And um, he was voted out the first week. And it was very awkward because, you know, this Tony Jacklin, you know, one of the all time great, great sports people. I mean, yeah. incredible kind of grace and agility and an amazing eye. And, you know, this was the end of his career, retired, all of his self-worth tied up in those physical abilities. And he had to stand there while a row of dancers went, well, it was like. A sack of mud being dropped <laughs> in the road, in the rain. You get nothing. And then he was sent home. And I often think, you know, I haven't seen Tony Jacklin since. And I often think, you know, did his self-esteem recover from that? That yeah. would be very, very difficult. Whereas if you'd locked Tony Jacklin in a room with a riddle and he hadn't been able to solve it, I doubt that would have done him much damage. <laughs> well, Morgana did very well on that live task. Uh, got the five points. You got the four points. Mm -hmm. Very good work from you. Um, Alan, uh, six forks, three points. Desiree, uh, four forks, two points. And Guz, very badly, two forks, one point. Um, so it's Alan's episode, uh, 21 points. Second place for you, Victoria. Bearing in mind you've come bottom of the first three episodes, this this is basically a victory for you, I think, the 16 points. I mean, huge, huge. Yeah, huge it's stuff. It's going to be strength for strength after this. Desiree, 15 points. Guz, 14 points. And Morgana, bottom with 13 points, which puts Desiree just in the lead ahead of Guz in the series so far. Uh, but um, Alan and Morgana are uh, fairly close behind. And uh, and also you're there as well, Victoria. So uh, fingers crossed for... The... <laughs> that's, that's the best you can say <laughs> for my performance. That's what the reviewers say. And yeah. also Victoria is there <laughs> as well. We've got some emails, Victoria, from uh, listeners, uh, our lovely listeners. Um, okay. Hi, Ed and Victoria. Victoria, I wanted to ask if you have made the Nutella Nachos combo again for your own personal consumption, and would you recommend it as a snack for the general public? Thank you so much. Uh, that's from a, a Taskmaster fan in the Philippines. I haven't made it again. It wasn't bad. I mean, it, it was interesting watching it back, looking at Desiree's face. She didn't think it was good. And I do think this might be a cultural thing yeah. that for Americans. Do you know, sometimes if you watch Faulty Towers, which of course was co-written between uh, John Cleese and Connie Booth, and you see mm -hmm. Connie Booth who's American, you see some of what the experience of Connie Booth must have been coming to England in the 70s and eating in hotels and sitting down and someone gives her half a grapefruit and an orange juice yeah. and that's a meal. <laughs> and you sort of see that horror weaved through the sitcom and I thought of that looking at Desiree's face <laughs> as she tasted that and I just thought yeah I've had worse <laughs> I haven't made it again but I mean I, that's not to say anything I do cook is any better no um this uh, this is great I've, I've been I've been wanting to ask you about this ever since you said it so this is this is from Amy in Newcastle uh hi Ed and Victoria um Question one, are Mr. Strong and Mr. Messy the only characters you've ranked, or is it a more extensive list? Um, question two, who do you think is the least sexy Mr. Man and why? Um, now, this, of course, relates uh, to, in uh, I believe, in the last episode, um, you were suggesting uh, that Mr. Strong and Mr. Messy were the sexiest <laughs> the sexiest Mr. Man. Um, Mr. Messy, specifically when he was blow-dried and he goes all smooth. Um, do you have a yeah. more definitive list than that, Victoria? Well, I don't, but I'm just thinking about one now. I, I mean, Mr. Sneeze, I quite 
I quite like the look of him, Sneezy. The least, I mean, it's probably got to be Mr. Uppity, hasn't it? I saw someone say that on Twitter. It's hard to... I mean, some people would go for Mr. Tickle, wouldn't they? Some people would think, what can he do with those arms? But I yes, think that would be course. creepy. I wouldn't really yeah. like that. I No, and I mean, in general, you know, if I would... If I were to indulge in an erotic fantasy, it wouldn't be the Mr. Men I was immediately thinking of. But there is some, Mr. Messy. I don't know. There's something about the, you know, it's like when somebody that you just like an old friend that you've known for years and never thought about like that. And then they're suddenly in black tie and you go, yeah. oh, you know, it's suddenly reinvented. And it's like that Mr. Messy, all, all smooth. Um it's like um, somebody else wrote to me on Twitter and I, and I thought, oh, gosh, this is something I've never discussed with another person. But this stranger and I were clearly on the same page. There's a moment where Mr. Jelly faints and is picked up by a tramp and there's a, a drawing of him in the tramp's hand and he's tiny. Yeah. He fits yeah. into the palm of that. And your whole universe changes as you go, yes. oh, these creatures are very, very, tiny, very small. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, that's a different kind of thing. That's more of a sort of maternal instinct you feel towards Mr. Jelly. But the moment when... When Mr. Messi comes out smooth, I mean, we've all had that, haven't we, with friends? And you think, are we going to let the whole relationship change? Or maybe it's just a moment I'll remember. Yeah. Oh, do you remember when you had that haircut or you did that thing? Um, generally, though, I suppose I'd like it on the record that, you know, it's not cartoon characters generally that I No, but within the, within the question of the Mr. Men, I'm not, we're not saying who's the sexiest and you're saying Mr. Mr. Messi. We are saying within the, within the world of the Mr. Men, it's Mr. Messi. For me, no, it's just, it's not always no. I know, Mr. Messi in that moment when he's where you yeah, because you were seeing him in a different way. See, I have this now. I've been married for nearly ten years. Yeah, but I have that with my husband now. Where one of us is suddenly wearing something they haven't worn before. You go, oh, you see yeah. him in a whole and not. I mean, obviously, my husband. You know, it might be. It's an old bit of footage on the internet of him dressed as Queen Victoria. Not then. <laughs> he wears some really stupid shit sometimes on television. But in real life, if you suddenly, if somebody's put him in a shirt on a panel show, and I go, oh, yeah. you wouldn't normally wear that kind of... Oh. And you sudden, you have that with a long-term partner, the sudden sense yes. of them, at the sort of otherness. You know, you're so used to them, and you know that's how they eat a boiled egg. That's what they do if they find a spider. And then there's suddenly a moment. You might look at them across a room at a party, and you suddenly have a sense of their sort of separate otherness and it's quite sexy yes I mean, I that's, that's what mr that. messy does for me for the, sure you know. <laughs> so that's mr yeah. messy yeah. yeah i'm really i'm really glad we asked that um oh this is a good one um hi ed and the gang i'd love to know how victoria thinks greg and alex would do if they were on only connect uh, which I'm a massive fan of, by the way. Uh, so having Victoria on uh, Taskmaster is a wonderful crossover. Thanks again for the oh. podcast. Looking forward to the rest of the series. Janine. Very nice. I think they do very well. This is one of the things that's weird for me about the dynamic on Taskmaster. In the world of Only Connect, Alex is alpha male. Yeah. He would be the captain. For me to watch Alex be treated as this sort of nebbish in the studio by Greg is really odd. That's yeah. not how I would see him. In our world, Alex, he can he can just do stuff. He comes up with the task. He's got a lateral brain. He's he's our he's our kind of guy. But Greg is also very smart. I think they would make a good team. I think there might be pockets of not they need something a bit different in the mix. If a team that was Alex, Greg and Desiree, so you bring in a bit of the feminine, some transatlantic stuff, maybe a bit of a kind of broader pop culture knowledge. I think that'd be a very powerful team. Well, we might yet see it. We might see the celebrity comedy only connect, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. I would be withering in the chair. <laughs> yeah. Withering. That would be, yeah. you finally get your own back on Greg. He'd turn up with a bit yeah. of wordplay at the top, absolutely destroy him. Mm. <laughs> It'd be great. Um, Victoria, thank you so much for coming onto the Taskmaster podcast. We always ask our guests to rate their experience on the podcast between one and five points uh, in the style of the Taskmaster. Uh, so please give the Taskmaster podcast a score between one and five from your perspective. Thank you. I would say four 
Mm -hmm. because it's very enjoyable talking to you, but I've got a docker point for making me relive some traumatic memories. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think four is always a, a fair score. Some people go in with five, and you know, those are the people that have no shame and enjoyed everything on Taskmaster. But no, I th- and we specifically. Oh no, I'm not to- one of those. No, no, no. <laughs> what did you just come on this episode because of of the bike and because of the riddle? Uh, and it was fantastic talking to you. And I think four is a very fair score. Thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you. There we are, a brilliant episode. Thank you so much, Victoria, for coming on. You're welcome back anytime if it's not too traumatic for you. Uh, look, keep watching Taskmaster. Channel 4, 9pm. You're not going to stop. You love it. That's why you're here. Come back next week. We've got another brilliant special guest. But for now, thank you very much. Look after yourselves. Keep watching Taskmaster. And goodbye. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.